So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Aditi, and welcome to the Cloud Provider OpenStack session. Uh, I work at NEC, and uh, I am also the uh, co-lead for the Provider OpenStack subproject. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am Kendall Nelson. I work for the OpenStack Foundation. I've been involved in OpenStack specifically for about four and a half years now, mostly working upstream for uh, previously IBM and now the OpenStack Foundation. And I've been getting more involved in the Kubernetes community over the last six-ish months. So, yeah. Okay. So let's get started with the presentation. Okay. So firstly, you will see what are cloud providers. Uh, mostly everybody of you know this, but it's just to revisit some things. Okay, so like to leverage cloud services in Kubernetes clusters, cloud providers are used. Um, cloud provider ena enables Kubernetes to talk with cloud APIs, uh, I mean for to get the in, uh, information about the underlying infrastructure, like your zones, uh, your volumes, and your node details. Okay. So in Kubernetes, uh, when they started, uh, they have all the cloud providers in tree, uh, like Azure, OpenStack, and GCP. All the code for the cloud provider uh, was built inside the Kubernetes binary, and also the code resides in the main Kubernetes repo. So as the uh, number of cloud providers have grown up in Kubernetes, it was very difficult to get manage all the cloud provider in the Kubernetes repo. And also, uh, it was uh, uh, they were facing maintenance issues. Their binary size were uh, was getting bigger, so they have decided to move all the cloud providers out of tree. So in Kubernetes, uh, for provider open stack, we have two versions of cloud cloud provider exist currently. One is the in tree one, and one is the out of tree provider. So the in tree cloud provider. Uh, Mostly current clusters are deployed on the entry cloud provider. Uh, it is deprecated. Uh, so we are also uh, maintaining the out of tree version. Uh, so any of you, if you are uh, 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 deploying a new Kubernetes cluster, that should be that should use the out of tree provider one. And those using the uh, in tree version, uh, they need to migrate to the out of tree version. Okay, so. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, when uh, uh, an entry provider, uh, what happened? Various Kubernetes components like Kubelet, uh, Kube Controller Manager, and um, uh, all these talks to the Cloud API. Uh, with the out of tree provider version, uh, all these things uh, they are they are aggregated to a single uh, binary that is called as Cloud Controller Manager. Yeah, so this is the basic uh, diagram for the entry versus out of free cloud provider. So uh, all the uh, control loops are extracted from the kube controller manager and the kubelet that uh, they are now uh, in cloud uh, in the CCM binary that is called as cloud controller manager. Okay. So yeah, so. Um, Deploying the out of tree provider, I mean, most of you are uh, well versed with uh, deploying the in tree version. So uh, here I have, uh, I'll just, there are uh, some summary that how will you deploy, deploy the out of tree cloud provider. So uh, there are various deployment tools available to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack, maybe Magnum, Cobes, KubeADM. So all, you know, uh, these things are common uh, for any of the uh, deployment tool you are using. So you need to specify uh, the flag cloud provider external for kubelets. Um, you need to uh, deploy separately the cloud controller manager for OpenStack as a daemon set in your cluster. And since the out of free cloud provider does not manage volumes, so you also need to deploy the CSI driver, send a CSI driver for volume management. So the uh, so for uh, deploying out of tree provider, you additionally need two things. One is the uh, deploying the CCM binary, and the Cinder CSI driver. Okay, so we have a sample QVDM con con config file available in our repository. 
We also, those who want to uh, contribute uh, in Cloud Provider OpenStack, uh, we also have a getting started guide available. The QVDM guide has recently been updated. Uh, so, yeah, I'll also uh, little, uh, tell you about how you can contribute to the uh, out of free cloud provider and uh, Okay, so we host the project in Kubernetes ORG only. Um, you can go to the link and uh, we have a repository here. Um, and uh, apart from uh, cloud provider, there are various other plugins like Cinder CSI, Manila CSI, Ingress Controller, the Barbican Key uh, Manager plugin, all uh, uh, this repository contains all of the plugins. Uh, and uh, so the mostly the code uh, is in the package repository in the package folder sorry <laughs> and uh, yeah we have all the uh, manifest file here to deploy the uh, cloud controller manager or to deploy the csi plugin any plugin you want to deploy the uh, default manifests are available here Uh, we also have examples for uh, all the all the plugins. Like, if you want to use any particular feature uh, of that plugin, uh, how to do that? All of the examples are available here. Okay, and we use Makefile for building our code. Um, All the Docker images, Docker files are available here. Uh, we run the CI job for cloud, cloud provider OpenStack repository with the help of OpenLAM. So uh, all the uh, all the manifest for the CI jobs is located in the OpenLAM repository. Okay, so now Kendall will tell you more about the plugins we manage. Yeah, so in addition to the entry and outer tree cloud providers, we have a variety of plugins. She's covered them a little bit, but there's uh, an Octavia ingress controller. We have two different um, storage plugins for Cinder and Manila. If you're familiar with those, I'll go into them a little bit more in a sec here. Uh, the Barbican key, manage, uh, key manager service and obviously needs some authentication too, so Keystone yeah, for that. So diving in a little bit deeper, the Octavia Ingress controller is a controller and not an actual load balancer service. It helps kind of manage all of them together. Um, and Octavia is the OpenStack project that um, uses LBAS for this. Um, for storage, you know, need uh, storage for your cloud. Uh, we have the Cinder is uh, the block storage project in OpenStack, and Manila is the uh, like file system service. So uh, depending on what you want for storage, you could use either one of those plugins. Um, and yeah, <laughs> uh, moving on, we have the the Keystone authentication service. Um, that works uh, as like a webhook authentication and for authorization. And then the Barbican key manager service plugin also lives in the repository and you can use that for encryption and decryption. Uh, yeah. So the other important project that we wanted to point out was uh, Magnum. Uh, DT mentioned it a little bit earlier, but basically it's a uh, service for management of your container infrastructure. Um, recently, with the uh, OpenStack train release, there were a variety of improvements that they uh, were able to implement and update, and so we wanted to point some of these out. The rolling upgrades being available, auto-healing now is also available. You can boot Kubernetes clusters from volumes and use configurable volume types, um, and then a little bit more of work was done on private clusters as well. So. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask later. And then updates on the actual provider OpenStack. Okay, 
so these are some major updates uh, so first is uh, previously uh, cloud provider open stack was a sig in kubernetes community now all the cloud provider sigs are dissolved and uh, provider open stack is a sub project under the sig cloud provider so previously sig cloud provider open stack used to maintain uh, used to manage cloud provider open stack cluster api provider open stack cluster auto scaler for open stack but uh, now these projects are under sig cluster life cycle and the provider open stack is now managed by sig uh, cloud provider uh, and the uh, next uh, thing is that uh, the entry open stack provider has been moved to staging um, so uh, those uh, components that have not that have not much dependencies on the main kubernetes repo and uh, and eventually uh, they will be removed uh, moved to the staging directory uh, in kubernetes so entry provider is also moved to staging in last uh, cycle uh, and also with that the sender volume driver is deprecated and will be removed in future releases um, secondly there is one important thing um, uh, since uh, since Kubernetes have a strict API deprecation policies, so the volume APIs will remain intact, and all of the calls to the uh, entry volume API will be directed towards the corresponding CSI driver. Uh, so uh, users, uh, the API will remain intact. So there will be no effect on the if uh, they are using an entry uh, sender volume driver and they have volumes, uh, persistent volumes and PVCs using the entry one, they just need to install the uh, CSI driver uh, while upgrading the cluster. And all of the calls from entry, uh, all of the API calls to the entry volume driver will be migrated to the CSI driver. This is currently is an alpha stage and uh, will be moved to beta next cycle. Second, there was a standalone sender driver uh, that has been deprecated because there was no user and no maintainer around it. So it has been deprecated. Um, lot Manila, Manila CSI driver is implemented in last cycle only, but uh, there was various uh, features and bug fixes has been done this cycle. Um, Cinder CSI driver is now updated to the CSI specs 1.1.0. Resize support has been added in Cinder CSI driver. Uh, so with this feature, the Cinder CSI driver is now in feature parity with the entry Cinder uh, driver. Go module support has been added in the uh, provider OpenStack repo. Yeah, so that's all update from the last cycle. Okay, so we are what we are planning for next cycles. Um, we need to do, there is a, a guideline for uh, proper documentation from SIG cloud provider. Um, we need to uh, do documentation as per that guideline. Only then uh, we can say, uh, we can completely remove uh, the entry provider. Um, we need to have the uh, CI job for entry migration so that we can move it to beta. Um, our CI is very fluctuating and uh, we want to move uh, jobs to kind. Currently, it, it uses a hack local up cluster dot sh script. Um, and we also want to have upgrade and migration strategy from moving entry to external provider. So one thing, uh, currently one PR is up for the documentation that, that tells how you can migrate from entry to external provider. The PR has not been merged yet, but it is up now. Um, so let's again, we also want to move our images to distroless. Um, in Cinder CSI, we are expecting um, uh, inline cloning and E2E test support for the next cycle. And if you want to have any feature, any bugs, you can report in the cloud provider OpenStack repo. Okay. So this is the rough timeline currently for the entry provider OpenStack removal. 
so basically there is a dependency uh, unless and until uh, the csi driver migration thing moves to ga we cannot remove the uh, provider open stack so uh, firstly uh, this migration things will goes to beta and then uh, we uh, we will uh, we can remove the uh, provider open stack yeah so you can check that Next, you can find us at the Slack channel, and uh, you can use the Google group also. We meet bi-weekly, right? Yeah, we have. A, I have not edited the meeting details. We have a bi-weekly meetings on Wednesdays. Timing, I forgot. Yeah. Depending on your time yeah. zone, it may or yeah. may not be okay. doable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it from our side. Yeah. Please come help us. Anyone have questions? No, no questions? <laughs> sure. Um, do you have uh, any idea about uh, kind of a feature enhancement roadmap? Or? Do we have a, a feature enhancement roadmap? Um, the, I, the, the timeline we laid out is kind of like where we're going as far as features on top of that or in more detail. I don't think we have a whole lot of that planned out yet. Um, opportunity to get involved. <laughs> if there's something that you're interested in in particular, definitely let us know. Yeah, another question? Is there any other authentication support other than exchanging a user pass for a bigger token? Uh, restating the question so that we can get over the recording. So uh, is there other... Uh, Authentication besides like Keystone is what you're asking? Like tokenless? Tokenless. Um, off the top mm. of my head, I don't think so. I think you can reach out uh, to the provider OpenStack Slack channel. Uh, the authentication plugin is um, managed by uh, Lengxiang Kong. Uh, so, uh, how to, how you can uh, involve in that or how, if is there any support, you can ask, ask there. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you happen to think of them later, please drop into the Slack channel and let us know. Thank you.